Today's Snail Mace Warrior partner is Become Stronger. We want to take the time to thank them for the offer that will be provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Become Stronger at become-stronger.com. All right, guys, I'm excited for this one. I think we're on episode 12. Yeah, because for some reason, I couldn't get Sam from Set for Set. Um, He was in China, and his internet connection was terrible, but he felt terrible too, and we both did, but we're going to reschedule that. But today, we have Kelly Manzone. Did I I say that right? Manzoni. Manzoni, there we go. Um, (laughs) And I'm just, I'm so excited because this is like the second... uh, female that I have on this podcast. It's really hard to find uh, women warriors that are doing mace specifically. And she uses those huge maces um, in a lot of her videos. So that's going to be cool. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce her a little bit. She's a lifelong athlete. She's done gymnastics, dance, softball, track and field. She's a swimmer. And her philosophy is become strong, yet mobile, flexible yet stable. So Kelly, let's go ahead. Let's ask you about your story in fitness and then kind of what led you to the mace. Okay. Um, well, like you said, background, I've been an athlete my whole life. Um, and naturally I kind of progressed into having it become my career, um, in my early twenties. So I'll be 39 uh, in October and I've been in the business for almost 16 years and I've sort of been, uh, you know, drawn to the unconventional while working in the conventional. And, um, you know, I work here in Westport, Connecticut. I live in Southport. So I've always been in mainstream fitness, but I sort of um, was first introduced to kettlebells around 2005, but I didn't really get into them, like really learn to train with them until about 2007. And then I got certified by Anthony DeLugio, who is my mentor by uh, Art of Strength, um, in 2009. And I took my my test while I was pregnant, which cracks me up. Wow. <laughs> I did, That's yeah. cool. And, um, and it's been my favorite tool for over a decade. Um, and I, what I like about the kettlebell is it becomes an extension of your body. And Anthony actually introduced me to uh, polyurethane Indian clubs back then, um, and short maces. And so I first started training with those in 2008. And I would say like, I, my knowledge was very basic. I didn't really know too much. And then I had my son in parenthood and, you know, working mom and all that. Um, but I still did my, my kettlebells are my favorite tool. And I call myself like a kettlebell hybrid because, you know, um, I think it's the most, versatile fitness tool and it becomes an extension of your body and the mace is very versatile and it becomes an extension of your body when you do it correctly so there's a lot of communication tactile learning you know with your hands and application and so um i first really started looking into mace training for myself personally to pick it up again after i had battled colitis for three years and i was really sick and that's how kind of like my instagram started was me kind of gaining my strength back after three years of being emaciated. Um, And I didn't feel like training myself at the gym. I wanted to kind of take my shoes off, have my own tools, have my own music going and reconnect to my body. And so slowly building my strength back. And I was very aware of Paul Walwinski, aware of Rick Brown. And uh, obviously my friends, as you know, I'm really close with Paul Gray. Right. And well, and I was like, you know, I'm like, maybe I want to kind of explore this again, because um, for me, kettlebell training is very nurturing. And, um, and I felt like I could get that same effect from mace training. So I attended the Rick Bound certification at um, the training room in New Jersey at Mike's place. Mike's a good friend of mine. So is, um, you know, John Harrison. That's the first time like we actually met in person. That's awesome. And so I've like, been like, like it's, like, it's so funny, like, Glenn, I met him there. Like, pretty much everybody I met at that certification, I'm still friends with three years later. So it's, it's a lot, it was, it was a great experience to yeah. kind of, you know, 
meet up with people that we had met each other on, you know, media, but never met in person. So that's how I first got introduced to, to MACE training. Uh, and that was my first experience, I guess, with, you know, uh, specific instruction in, in 2015. And so I've been doing it um, and exploring it ever since. That's, that's awesome. And I've noticed that a lot of people who start with kettlebells, like it's like the, the gateway drug, right? So you start with kettlebells and then we move into the maze because that's kind of how, how I started. I was like, I love kettlebells, but then I met the maze and I just fell in love with the maze. Like I stayed there, you know, but you use tons of different training modalities. Like Definitely. You do everything. Can you explain like to listeners why that would be a great idea? Not just doing mace, but. Uh, well, it kind of fits with my personality, <laughs> but you know, like, um, I'm, I'm like a lifelong mover. So like I, it's funny because when I was growing up, I didn't have an attention span, you know, but I, I could work hard, uh, and I had a lot of responsibility at a young age and my childhood was very unconventional and, um, it was a little <laughs> quite dysfunctional, but I knew I was loved and I was given a lot of responsibility. And my way of processing stress or life was through movement. You know, I got into gymnastics at a very young age, dance at a very young age. And it was just like, if I was, if you saw me somewhere, like I couldn't sit at a desk, but you, if you got me outside, I would be on that jungle gym. You know, and I do my best thinking when I'm moving. So like, I can't like sit still and get shit done. So like when I say like <laughs> on my post, like I needed a movement break and I'm, th I'm thinking, I really am thinking. And so it's movement for me has always been, um, you know, exploring it, uh, being challenged and just seeing that like, you know, I, I don't believe there's, I don't think it's just black and white. I think movement is, there's a ton of gray area. So you're always going to have people that say, no, it's supposed to be this way or it's supposed to be this way. But there's a lot of gray area. And I think the beauty lies in that gray area. And that's why I like mixing various modalities. And I'm a big believer in being strong and mobile. Like, you know, not just like loading a body that can't move. But I, and then also, you know, being flexible because I've always been, you know, I, I was a butterflyer, I was a, you know, a gymnast, a dancer. So I sometimes my mobility is too excessive and I have to dial that back. I learned that in kettlebell sport when I was all this, all of a sudden going high volume overhead and then I'm like, or I'd be like way right. too back in the rack because I have all that lumbar, you know, flexibility, mobility. So I just feel like sinking in there too far. So it's like, it's that fine line, but I think it's important to be able to kind of be a really well-rounded athlete. And I, you know, I honestly feel like I'm just starting, even though I've been doing moving forever, like right. I excited about my forties, like I am like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and I didn't see a lot of women, um, you know, that were like at the time when I was getting into mace training who were like me, you know, late thirties. Right a mom, you know, um, a lifelong mover. And I was like, okay, you know, I, I, I wanted to explore and now I've dove face it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could tell. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell all your videos. I'm like, what is she doing today? But I love it though. You know, like, honestly, like it makes me tick. It makes me happy. Like, you know, my husband says it all the time, he's like, you're really fortunate. You have a career that you absolutely love. Right. And I, and so like, you know, um, I'm, I'm looking forward. I think my stronger years are ahead of me. I, you know, I think this is just the, the beginning and I think it's, I want other women to understand that like, if they want to explore a new modality, like they don't have to feel like there's any roadblocks in their way. They could just, you know, do it, do it safely, learn well and enjoy the process. There's a lot of beauty in the process and yeah. the it's ever evolving. I think like it's funny because when we were discussing during this podcast, it's like back one of my videos from like, I think it was like 2015 in April. And then I watched a video from this past April and it's like night and day. <laughs> it's like literally it's exciting, you know, like you say, okay, that's where I started. This is where I'm going, and now I'm hosting these events, and I'm going to learn meals and all this kind of stuff, and get around good people. It's what it's about. Yeah, 
Totally. And I'm glad that I got you on the podcast because part of the reason why I started this podcast, because I wanted more women to try the mace. And yeah. I think you're a perfect like, inspiration for that. I mean, I see you sometimes and I'm just like blown away by what you can do with the mace. Oh, so, so, like your structure, you got the posture. That's crazy how good you are at it. Now, <laughs> I know going back, Going back to the mobility and flexibility for listeners who are just starting um, or just, you know, someone just getting into fitness, what's the difference between flexibility and mobility? Well, you know, there's a lot of things that I'll relate it into the way of, of mace training because I could ramble on forever. Okay. So this is what I realized you know, uh, for myself, when I was, I wanted my clients because they once they started seeing me train with the mace. You know, people think that the mace is like a mobility tool, right? Right. But yes and no. If you are inhibited in your movement when you swing your mace, you're not going to be really efficient. So that's where you get, you know, people are contacting me. Oh, like you know, I've been swinging my mace, my elbows are bothering me. Well, that shouldn't happen. You know, like my my wrists are bothering me. That shouldn't happen. You know, like you, if you're locked up for your T-spine and your lateral lines and you have poor shoulder mobility and range of motion, and then all of a sudden you're trying to load it with a mace and go into the back swing, right. you're going to mess yourself up or you're going to constantly be kind of like um, loading a body that's not prepared. And so that's when I transitioned from myself training myself so i didn't teach my clients mace training until i became efficient myself i was like i have to you know so i didn't really start training my clients in mace training for like a year and a half you know, for the past year and a half like i spent a year and a half learning the mace and relearning and working on that and then once i started teaching people i realized i'm like holy shit like, I'm lucky that I have this natural mobility and flexibility. I could go to my end range and be completely comfortable. Right. You know, like, I, the clients that I'm working with with the mace get on a train, commute to Manhattan, work in finance, sit at a desk, sit on the train, and come back. And they're like, that. and then so that's where stick mobility came in. And I was like, okay, like I need to help mobilize my client. Like I, I'm not going to be able to get them to use the mace and swing the mace until they're moving well. So that's when like the mobility and flexibility factor came in of really addressing the lateral lines, the T-spine, the shoulder girdle, opening up the pecs, you know. And so I started with three clients that were going to be like my test subjects. I had Fran, uh, Ted, Adam, where I was like, okay, we're going to prime you with five to six stick mobility exercises over a period of time. And I'm going to train you how to swing because, you know, I know I can have them do an offset press or a lunge or a forward, you know, press into a squat or barbarian squat, but they really wanted to swing like I swing. And I was like, okay, like this is a process. I love the 10 and two in the 360, the hand to hand switch. I love single arm work. I like the coordination of it. I like the fact that, you know, your brain, it, everything has to connect from your feet up. So I wanted my clients to feel that. So I was like, you're going to take your shoes off. You're going to feel the ground and we're going to mobilize you. So I started incorporating a lot of original strength resets, rocking to get their wrists and forearms prepared. Because, you know, when you're first learning, you're, like, over-gripping. You're, like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> and I started, playing, I started playing Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. <laughs> like, you're going to listen to music. You're going to, like, because, you know, like, a part of being mobile and flexible, in my personal opinion, is you have to mentally allow yourself to let go, you know? Mm. And so it was a two it, it, it was a dynamic process of saying, all right, so emotionally you're going to let go because you, I know you're a type A personality and you work in finance and you're used to being in control and it's going to be really awkward to let that mace move behind you. So emotionally you have to let go. Physically you have to let go. So that's where the mobility and flexibility in this particular situation that we're discussing falls into place for, for me personally and how I decided to teach people. So now, you know, Fran is swinging the wood, you know, 22 pound 
Nice. Like a boss. <laughs> and, so head. and then this other one, like uh, the, the first one I got from William, you know, like wow. they're swinging this and they're swinging the steel. So it was just like, it, and then I started getting contacted by PTs and by other personal trainers. And they were like, you know, okay, I have a client who wants to swing. I, I tried to teach them how to swing. Their 360 is up here. They're like this. Mm -hmm. Their hands are at the top. They're not dropping to the base of the neck. You know, like, Kelly, can you help me? And I'm like, okay, well, I, know, I don't know if I could really help you, you know, but I can share with you what's worked for me in my experience mobilizing my clients. So now it's like, it's been amazing to see the process because it literally like, I was, when Fran and Ted specifically were like, I want to swing like you do. I was like, well, it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. and it worked, you know, cause it, it's, they do the other variations of, of stuff, you know, but they really wanted to learn how to swing. So I think like that's, you know, now I'm rambling because I told you. I could no, I love it. And I know listeners are going to love this stuff. This is, I think this is very unique, especially because you use the mobility stick or is it the other way around stick? Mobility? stick mo yeah, yeah. Like so, my buddy, Jared, who is the other uh, co-assistant for stick mobility. So he and I are co-assistants for, uh, he held me down in, hosted me, sorry, down in New Jersey for a mace workshop with his staff at the next generation facility. So I think I had like seven trainers from their facility and we use for the workshop set for set maces, the steel maces, <coughs> excuse me. And I primed them with stick mobility and I taught them not from my view, but from the experience I had of working with my clientele. Cause some of them already had some sort of mace experience, you know, um, and also I adapted it to, you know, they're working with a lot of athletes. So they weren't really interested in, you know, that their athletes aren't going to be doing a ton of 10 and 2 and 360 or hand to hand switch, though they can. But I started incorporating a lot of the other mace work for them and, you know, how to prime their clients or prime their athletes. You know, you're not going to just throw a mace at somebody who is a pitcher. You know, like, you know, they're loaded on that one side all the time. So you have to like mindfully approach specifically for who the person is that you're, you're working with. So that's when I started kind of developing it, you know, for the PTs. So I've been to a couple PT clinics and like, you know, we're doing kneeling offset presses. We're doing some stuff in shin box, you know, some AFM stuff brought in, you know, um, and realizing, you know, the mace is really popular right now, and it's going to continue to build in popularity. Right. I think something to be said for, for it all. So whether you want to, you know, do traditional work, or you want to kind of do flow, or if you want, if you're in a PT facility, but you want to kind of integrate um, a mace, there's ways to do it, and there's ways to do it that are effective and safe. Right. But stability became a solution. You know, like when I had, I started the workshops that I've been doing came from accumulating a bunch of questions I would get off of Facebook or Instagram or emails. So I just started writing down a list because these strangers are contacting me and they're like telling me, you know, I, I have blisters on my hands or, you know, like my wrists are bothering me. Mm. And one of the, the uh, people that contacted me about their wrists, was, they were uh, a massage therapist. Uh, well, you're using your hands all day, but I, so I was like, can you please film your swing and send it to me? So like, no wonder why her wrists were bothering her because at the, the bottom of the pole down, her mace head was a way away from her. So her oh, wrist wow. worked on. I was like, okay, so that's why. And then, um, you know, I had somebody reaching out to me saying, uh, I've been swinging heavy maces for competition. And like, I'm wearing an elbow sleeve. I've got tendonitis. Like my elbows are killing me. So I, I said, send me a video. Let me, you know, kind of see. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm just sharing. I, you know, I'm, I'm just what, you know, providing my thought. You could either take it or not. It's fine. But like, I was like, well, you know, your backswing, your hands are all the way up here. Your elbows are taking all that weight, you know, mm. so swinging, you know, 25 pounds. 30 pounds, drop down to 15 to 20 for a little while, 
and open up your lateral lines. Like you could tell his T spine was like completely locked up. Yeah. So, so I just sent him some, you know, original strength resets, mobilizing the T spine, opening up everything. And then the tendonitis went away. So like, you know, it's, it's more than just, here's the exercise, go swing, or here's the exercise, go lunge or whatever, you know, like, yeah, it's more depth to it. Yeah. And this is exactly why in all the previous podcasts, every time I ask some, uh, one of the coaches, like, what's, what's the best way for someone to start training? Go see someone, go see a coach, go see someone who's been doing it for a while. Cause they're going to be able to see you in that 3d view and tell you what, what's going on. Right. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I trained a girl on a uh, FaceTime who lived in Arizona. She was a plot. She owned her own plot studio. And so like, you know, we'd have a FaceTime session. And I'd be like, okay, you know, turn to the side and I could kind of see her back swing and stuff. And I was like, man, my mind was blown. Cause I'm a <laughs> dinosaur. I like, I like pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is kind of cool. Like I'm training from my living room. Holy shit. That's crazy. Oh but, yeah. But, you know, I have to admit like, uh, like Paul Gray, when he came, when I had him over here the year before last, I think it was like a year and a half ago, he was here for his eye flows and John Harrison was here for the workshop too. And John and I were swinging with Paul and he literally gave me like, and, and John, like one little tip that changed everything with my swinging from then on. Drum roll. And it was really, uh, that was sort of like the turning point because I, I don't know if you know this, but like I, I competed in mace competitions in the beginning uh, and, you know, yeah. I did like four vintage strength uh, mace competitions and uh, back in 2015 and 16. And, you know, I really wasn't, if I watched back, I'm like, I really wasn't that good at all. Yeah. You know, yeah. like my swinging was pretty shitty, but... I was a part of AKA and GS planet and um, I love kettlebell sport and I happened to be there in vintage strength was new and I'm friends with Don and, um, and there wasn't any women doing it. The men were signing up and I'm like, well, fuck it. Like I'll just put myself out there. Like, you know, I, I know I'm not great at this, but if there's nobody else doing it, I don't mind being out there. And I know that, you know, the pioneer, I'm like, here I go. <laughs> there you go. And I'm, I'm glad I did that because it made me stop, reflect, and then I completely changed my approach. And that's when I started to dive into, you know, like really just practice, practice. Like forget about competition in a five-minute set. Fuck that. Like focus on moving and swinging well. And that's what I've been doing for the past. I haven't competed in like two years, I don't think. Oh, wow. No, I, I was like, you know, I, and not to say that I won't again. I, I'm always open to anything pretty much, but I'm really enjoying the transition into, I think like goddess, especially like the bamboo, because mm -hmm. there's it. Now that I started swinging goddess, my steel work is stronger. And, uh, you know, I was going to ask you too, it's because the weight is at that cement part, right? Or that stony part. I mean, because the bamboo is super, the handle is like light, right? The, yeah, this it's one's different. my, this bamboo, this particular gata, this bamboo, I don't know why, this one gets sticky. So it's like, the <laughs> like is amazing. It has, it's like sticky. I love this one. That's cool. Um, it, it, there's like, you know, it's not exactly straight, mm -hmm. you know? Bamboo. So that like this one's crooked, that one's crooked a little bit. There's flex to it. So it bends and you know, uh, there's a warmth to it because it's a natural material mm. where steel is so like solid and cold and rigid, which there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It's like, this made me more efficient because when I'm doing hand to hand switch that, that got, wants to get away from me. You know, like I have to really, you know, learn the nature of the beast. And then this right. one that William made, which is my other favorite one is this one's heavy. <laughs> I can it's tell. Three yeah. It's beautiful. Wow. To swing it. And that's, that's a very thin bamboo handle. So I liked, like, I felt like I needed to branch out of steel because I wanted to be efficient swinging any style mace 
like right. in any lever length and any pummel shape. Because as you know, the shape of the pummel is going to change the feel mm-hmm. of this. So that's when I, that's why I have 17 maces now. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. We were talking, we were discussing that before we started recording. Uh, yeah. She has maces and clubs everywhere. Right? Every, like it's, it's, it's bad, <laughs> but it's good at the same time. <laughs> I think I, I'd walk into your house and I'd it'd be heaven for me, but you were saying your husband's probably like, uh, oh, when the, the day the tire got dropped off on the porch, he was like, what, why is there a tire on our porch? And I'm like, you know, I just felt like I needed one. Like <laughs> dropped it off. And so he's fishing, and then I leave, and I come home the next day. I get home from work, and there's a sledgehammer parked next to my tire. <laughs> so he put that sledgehammer there for me, and I was like, he got like what one one uh, Valentine's Day years ago. He got me 14 kettlebells, and he lined them up in a hallway with chocolate all around, and I was like, I'm done <laughs> <laughs> for life, married for life, <laughs> married for life. <laughs> That is so cool. It's cool to have a partner who can support you and in, in your, you know, things yeah, that you yeah. do. You know, it, and I, I think it's interesting because, you know, now my, my son is eight and, and, you know, he asks a lot of questions about what I'm doing and he knows I'll be traveling in the upcoming months and stuff. And I, I think I'm the only goddess swinger at his, you know, mom at his school. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> And probably the toughest looking one. I don't right. know about that, but you know, it's funny because like where the, the school is, they have a really cool playground where I work out all the time. So I'll cut it. We have live a mile from the school. So I'll be in like the baseball field working out and the kids are on recess and they're like, there's Leo's mom. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> so I've seen you on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So like just, just, you know, personal question. Have you always had that amazing body that you have? Or did, I mean, how did that happen? Was it just kettlebell and mace and clubs? Or is it just a combination of everything? I'm actually at my, you know, I was talking about, because I'm, I'm competing October 27th. It'll be my eighth kettlebell sport competition. Oh. I'm still in the sport. I'm still a baby in it. I'm, it I struggle with that sport a lot. But um, I, I weigh the heaviest I've ever weighed, ever. So I'm like in 52 pounds right now. And it's not, not bad, but I keep creeping up each competition. I'm like, come on. See, so this it, is where weight doesn't matter because I look at your body. I'm like, she's fucking, you look good. Oh, thank you. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, I feel lucky because I'm, I'm almost, you know, the fact that like I'll be 39 soon and I, I feel strong. I feel fabulous. I, I have like a mesomorphic body type. You know, so like I naturally kind of um, have more of an athletic build and my body kind of really adapts to the what I'm doing. So if like if I'm loading it with sport, you know, my traps will blow up and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. You know, I do a little bit of everything. So I like to sometimes like I'll dial it back and I'll start doing I'm trying to do more cardio right now to work on my endurance uh, for sport, <clears throat> but I just feel fortunate to feel like I'm just getting started. So like, I, I'm excited, you know, my body's going to change no matter what. I've had a baby. My body's been through a lot. When I was sick with colitis, I was a size zero. My clothes fell off of me. Wow. Uh, the, you know, work full time while my husband unfortunately was unemployed during that time. I had a little kid at home and I pushed my body teaching a ton of classes and overworking and, and it just kind of gradually has healed. And I'm just happy that I got my strength back, but I'm stronger than I've ever been. It's just a different style of strength. Yeah. Cause like in twenties, I went through a huge like calisthenics phase and I could, I was ripped. I mean, I could do like 12, 10 to 12, like unbroken pull-ups two finger push-ups with my thumb. What? And, yeah. Now, if I tried that, I think my fingers would snap. <laughs> <laughs> They'd just be like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably what would happen to me. Oh, God. 
know if I attempted that now, but I like to revisit things that I used to do. So like, you know, mm -hmm. I'll bring up the parlette bars and I'll start you know, doing a little bit of the old calisthenics. I'm nowhere near where I used to be. <laughs> like I said, I'm 30 pounds heavier then. No, I mean, now than then, you know, uh, it's just different, but I like where I'm at now and I'm excited to see where I go in the future. Yeah. And I mean, I watch your stuff and you say you're just beginning and I'm like, no, I'm just beginning because I see you and I'm like, she's way ahead of me, ahead of a lot of people. Um, I think it's a mental thing. You know, there's yeah. a lot of mental. I, I don't go into anything thinking that I can't do it. I, I know I have a, I've, I have a foundation that I've spent decades building. And so like, I just rely on knowing that the structure is sound. So go try it. And if it works out fabulous, if it doesn't, well, you know, practice, practice, practice. Right. Now going back to Mace, mm -hmm. um, in your, in your opinion, because you've been working with the Mace for a while, um, what are the benefits? what uh, for yourself and maybe for others well also for myself it's been a combination of like emotional and and physical so physically i i feel like um it, it's a great offset to the high volume of kettlebell sport all the i my body does not like sagittal plane high volume overhead so it it, it gives me a nice relief from the sagittal plane, you know, um, and um, I like the coordination, you know, I like the, the, the brain stimulation, I like the rhythm of it, you know, I love how y you really now could kind of swing heavy, but have a really nice relaxed grip. So I, I like the single arm work because I think it's really helped me balance coordination and, and some of the strength out. Um, obviously I love having strong grip. I'm all about grip strength. I think that's one of the most underrated things for women is the importance of grip strength, especially as we get older. You know, like I think sometimes as women, we're so focused on booty gains and, and oh, right. forget that one day we're going to be 75, 80, whatever it may be, maybe not be in the best of health and have to grip stuff. So like, you know, like your hands and your feet, you're going to have no matter what. We're sort of in our in-between phase of life. So it's fun to explore movement. It's fun to do certain things. But I think the foundation now of like adding this mace, works, mace work leads into stronger gains as, as you get older. So gripping is so key. Coordination, key. Rhythm, key. You know, like, uh, and of course you get the, you know, like everybody's going to say, you know, your shoulders feel good, your back feels good, you're working your biceps, you know, you get all that, you get your core work, of course, but um, I, I like the, the stimulation of the central nervous system. I like that, you know, when you're not, you don't have a mirror in front of you, obviously you're just kind of just swinging, you have to kind of zen out. So you get into like this zen feeling. So I think you're able to kind of connect to your breathing. And then of course, if you want to go more cardio with your mace, you could go for speed, you know, like it's, it's, it's versatile. You know, yeah. yesterday I was doing that evil monkey mace, the, the marching. So marching is great yeah. all over, you know, strength work, but having that long lever up there and balancing that out, like my shoulders had to stabilize. Everything was like on fire. My core just marching with a freaking mace overhead. And Everyone then I, loved like, it too. I reposted it because it was interesting. Oh, nice. But that's what I think is like, I think that, you know, like I, I embraced all the traditional stuff, but I think like, you know, even the challenge of just a forward press holding and then walking with 17 pounds of water up there going, <laughs> my whole body had to like light up. And then I had to like, think I had to lock out shoulders packed, lats engaged, you know, my, my feet were working, my, abs were working. So like, that's important because that, that type of stuff allows me to do all the other crazy stuff that I do. You know, like, like there's a lot of benefit to kind of taking a, um, a broader approach to mace training. It doesn't exactly have to fit into a specific envelope. 
Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad you, you uh, let the listener into what you were experiencing in your head and your body when you were doing the march because we look at it and we're like that. She's making it look easy and I'm sure she's having – it's easy for her. So I'm glad you shared the fact that it busted your ass. <laughs> right? It does. You know, like if you're with the walking lunges, you know, with that offset, especially because that's such a long lever and you feel the water moving – so like, you know, if, if the pummel is on your right side with the water, you have to pull down with the right and almost like press up with the left to kind of like offset. So it's like, it, it's, it's a coordination thing that leads to a lot of like, st st you know, uh, stability. And there's a lot of strength demand, at, you know, at the, at the same time. I just, I love stuff like that. It's a little off the beaten path, but it's not really. If you really think about all the times throughout our day when we're offset loading stuff, we're right. not always completely balanced and even. And I think one of the benefits of mace training is the offset work. Right. So it, it's a challenge. Yeah. Bridge, Ab you know, pressing, absolutely. All that stuff. Yeah, and I think that's that's definitely one of the things that's super challenging for me, especially with all the overhead stuff. So seeing you march with it was is interesting, you know. Try it. I I am, and I will post it, and I will tag you. <laughs> definitely, you know, and it's funny because it, like in, in that march, because I have to be aware of my my lumbar. I gotta you know watch what's happening with my spine alignment. You know, like you can't just start going into that interior tilt and sticking your ass out. You have to like find that nice neutral position. You got to like really engage and find your pelvic floor as you're driving that knee up. So there's a lot of like, it, it's funny because like, you know, my neighbor, uh, one of my many neighbors that are like, think I'm nuts. <laughs> sweet. Poor Terry. I'm so sad he's moving soon, but he's 81 and he's sweet as hell. Yeah. And he's what are you doing over there? He, he's like, are you doing another trick? And I'm like, well, no, it's not a trick. I'm like, there's a lot of thought that's going in into that. I mean, it m probably looks crazy to you. He thought he's like, is, is that a self-defense <laughs> weapon? I'm like, no, <laughs> but it could be a good one. But, you know, it's interesting. There, it, there's a lot more uh, to it. Same thing with kettlebell work, you know, like bottom up training. Fabulous. Love it. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Like there, I think sometimes there's a misconception, oh, you're doing like, you know, something that's a trick. No, I mean, like maybe it looks that way, but like flip a kettlebell upside down and move with that bell. You have to focus and it's going to stimulate you differently than any dumbbell ever could. <laughs> and you, oh, have, yeah. you could use a dumbbell and zone out and not like really connect to your movement. I think what's beautiful about mace training, when done correctly, you have to connect to your body and you have to connect to your mind right and that's something that i experienced with it it's definitely the mind and body together so if you don't ah. got that connection you can get hurt yeah for sure okay so you mentioned breathing and that's the topic i want i've been wanting to kind of get into before before it's too late but uh what's what's the best way to breathe when you're using the mace like let's just say let's just use the 360 or the 10 to 2 as an example like what's your breathing patterns with that so i i use the exhale like if we're doing the 360 inhale as it goes into the back swing exhale through center with that exhalation through center those core muscles catch mm. then it's oh, exhale abs that's if, even if like you're if you're doing a continuous 360 it's sort of like the same thing that exhale is when that bottom hand starts to pump but if it's the pause that exhale it recenters refocuses you so wow. like times like i'll tell clients staying with a 360 uh off switch on switch so off switch you relax on switch there's tension off switch, relax on switch. So that exhalation is that on switch, you know, there's a lot of heat coming out of the body with, with the breath. So when you're pushing out your breath, that's your, your fire, that's your on. 
Right on. I know people are going to enjoy that. I was going to, I was actually going to wait to ask uh, Coach RT3 because we're going to have him soon. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, podcast, and he had a YouTube video specifically about breathing with the 360. So maybe I'll go deeper with he, him. Too. He's great. He, like, he's very meticulous with how he dials into his, his mace training. Like, I, I, I like his approach and his philosophy because it, it, it's also sort of, uh, you know, from a, like full perspective outlook, all the finer details. He's very detailed. Yeah, That's yeah. And I've seen some before and afters of him and it's just, it's mind blowing to see oh, how his posture has changed too. My before and after, it's like, okay. I remember like, you know, when, like you start off with a seven pound mace or something like that. And you're like, what is going on? And then, oh, it's like, man, okay. Like I was swinging Tom, uh, village is a 35 pound gata. Now I only got a few swings, but that was 35 pounds on a wood in that, uh, that uh, uh, octagon, whatever it was kind of shape. Oh, right. I was like, holy shit. Okay. <laughs> but again, you know, like I knew I had the foundation to attempt it. I knew that wouldn't be my normal swing, but I just wanted to try and to be right. able to like get some swings out of 35 pounds of gata with wood handle that was slippery on a hot day. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Hey, I'm like all <laughs> kind of hard work and detail pays off. Yeah. 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 I, you know what? I, I'm going to have to go back in your Instagram because I need to see some before and afters of you too. Cause I'm pretty sure there's oh some my God. stuff on there. <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> but yeah, somewhere, you know, like now, like when, when Paul W comes and, uh, so the workshop's on September 8th, but before that, he's coming, I think, for a full week, so he'll be here on the court. Him and Kevin will be here, and I'm going to start really kind of tuning into my Indian club work, because I feel like, you know, my mace work I feel very comfortable with, and I, I feel like I could comfortably teach people safely, and I'm like, okay. But my, my club work is, uh, you know, I feel yeah. more comfortable with two-hand heavy club, but like Indian club work. I'm really looking to kind of dial into another skill and definitely with the meals, like jump in. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing with those meals, but I'm, <laughs> I was out there the other day, stubborn as hell in the rain going, I got this. Like, just listen to the music, Hal, just go. Just so, you know, <laughs> on some of that is, it's fun to like, this is more exciting to me, even though I work in conventional fitness and I use TRX and barbells and, and all that all the time and dumbbells. Like this is where the bread and butter is to me. Like the, the real joy is like these kind of tools, especially when they're handmade. Like, oh that's just, yeah, they're beautiful when they're handmade. Ryan Pitts makes amazing maces. He's making the maces for the women's movement collaborative on September 29th and 30th. In North Carolina, so we'll all I've have read that. Is there? So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I've been meaning to message him too because I need to collab with him as well because I I've seen the stuff. It's incredible. It's like legit. He is such a kind soul, so yeah. talented, and you know he's a one man shop, which is incredible. You know, if you think about it, like he does just custom work day in and day out. There's nothing wrong with swinging you know, a steel mace that's highly manufactured, they're great tools. Yeah. But there's something really special about either, you know, having like my buddies, William and Tom make me got it, and knowing my friends are making those tools or knowing that Ryan is specifically making these tools for these women. Most of the women that are coming to that event have never touched a mace. So it's just like, you're getting a handmade tool from like an awesome craftsman who's also an awesome human being. It just makes it really special. That's so cool. So do you want to, do you want to go ahead and tell people where they can find you and then the upcoming workshops that way we can sure. wrap this up. So like uh Kells bells 88, obviously is my Instagram page. Uh, Kelly Manzoni on Facebook, my website. I don't, you know, like, like I'm a, I'm a tech dinosaur. It's incredible that I can even like keep up with what I'm doing right now, but my website is Kel, uh, kmmoves.com. So kmmoves.com. And, you know, you can reach me, direct message, either email kelly at uh, cammoves.com or Instagram, Facebook. Right on. Are you doing any online training? I do have online clients. I only okay. take a couple at a time. Like, okay. I've got now down in Texas because, like, I don't do any 
generic programming right now. So everything is really personalized and I spend a lot of time on it. Everybody could like, they could text me, they could call me, they could Marco Polo me, email me, um, you know, FaceTime sessions and stuff like that. I, I probably am going to try to work into more online training that is not as uh, personalized soon. But right now I'm enjoying the process of training like two to three people at a time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like the challenge of having the phone propped up and, you know, I could see that person and I'm like, okay, like we could fix this. Okay. Right. Like, you could do this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to explore it more. I think I like All it. Right. It's All right, cool. I, I hope that one day you, you do what kind of what Leo's doing with the online training course and stuff. I'd love to see an online training course I, by you. Get all that organized. <laughs> you like, I'd probably what? be further along if my brain allowed me to figure that shit out. Like, I can see that so in your future. There's only so many hours in a day, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. right now, but that's something I'd like to do in the future. I think like next year holds a lot of opportunity to start pulling that stuff together. I'm going to be revamping my website. You know, uh, I like, um, like I said before, like applying stuff first and then like molding it into the workshop, you know, sort of right. like there's a lot of momentum this fall with a lot of cool projects and I'll see what happens going into the next year. Right on. All right, so your workshops, you have workshops coming up. I don't know if you want to announce some of them. Sure. Well, uh, so September 8th, I'm hosting Paul Walwinski here, you know, from Australia. So super excited. We have 35 people coming, including Paul, which is insane because I sold like 22 tickets in four hours. Wow. We sold out like in two days and then I added five more spots and I was like, okay, I can't have any more people. <laughs> but like Tom and William are making all handmade goddess for the event. So half of the goddess are gonna be wood, half of the goddess are gonna be bamboo. Then we've got clubs coming from Revolution Clubs. Kevin Rail's coming out from Utah to help assist. Um so I'm like this is gonna be oh no, my phone's dying. Oh no. Oh there oh, they're timing. Yeah, um, so that's going to be super special. And then at the end of September, I'll be down in North Carolina at the Original Strength Institute with the Women's Movement Collaborative. So I'll be one of the 12 female presenters on Sunday morning. I'll be teaching the women MACE, introducing them to MACE. Uh, and that's where Ryan Pitts' work comes into play. Right. And um, October 13th, Paul Gray is coming from the UK. He and I are doing a very small workshop, which was awesome that sold out in less than 24 hours also. Wow. Uh, we're, we're doing, I wanted to create a special event where we had maybe like, uh, well now we're at 10 people, but 10 people. And it's going to be an intensive workshop with people who have some experience working mace, movement, mobility, and kettlebells. And then it's followed by a lunch that I've organized where I want to encourage conversation. So like we have mm -hmm. our work, up, and then we're just gonna sit there with some food and drinks and talk everybody just open table conversation training geeking out and all that kind of stuff and hopefully Paul and I could answer people's questions and guide them along you know where they need to go then the following weekend I'm with stick mobility at Chelsea Piers so I'm co-assisting there in New York for the certification then uh, November 17th I'll be out in Ohio I've created a program with a friend of mine who is a runner. I wanted to bring unconventional training tools to runners and she's in the running world. She's an ultra runner and she also works with professional athletes. She works with uh, NFL football players for foot, ankle, mobility stuff and restorative movement. That's awesome. So we're doing a, a kind of a tier workshop where we integrate stick mobility on, and original strength exercises. And then we also incorporate offset loads with the mace and with the kettlebell to make them sturdier runners. So that That's event will be up soon. Yeah, I'm super right. excited about that. And then All right. I got some Kashi Asad from Persian Yoga. I'm hosting in April 27th and 28th. It'll be the first ever U.S. certification. Wow. So, yeah, super excited wow. about that. 
bunch of other shit in 2019, but wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Well, we have a lot to look forward to. I'm going to go ahead and um, add that on the blog post. So if you're watching the video, it should be down below. And if not, go on my website or on the YouTube and you should find the links to Kelly. Kelly, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We did it, our woman warriors. Sorry, I was like rambling my butt. No, I love it. I, I like how everyone says I'm rambling. I'm like, no, that's the purpose. We want to hear from you. We want to hear all the good stuff. Um, anyway, well, thank you. And may the universe always flow with you. Thank you so much. What you're doing is really wonderful. Right? And you're, you're awesome, Victoria. I'm so glad that I had a chance to talk to you, see your face smiling. So thank you. Yours too. Thank you.